This is a Security Weekly production. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. This episode of Hack Naked TV is brought to you by IT Pro TV. With IT Pro TV, you gain access to the most important tools needed to prepare for your IT certification. IT Pro TV has thousands of hours of up to date, high quality video content. Course topics include CCNP. CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner, Ethical Hacking, Virtualization, Cryptography, SSH, Microsoft Server 2016, and more. You can stream their courses live and on demand to your Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, PC, or mobile device. They have one low monthly subscription price and you can cancel at any time. Corporate pricing is available and clients include Harvard, MIT, UCSD, Stanford, and more. Check out itpro.tv forward slash hacknaked to upgrade your brain with the most popular IT certifications. Use the code HACKNAKED30 for a free 7-day trial and save 30% off for life. Welcome to another episode of Hack Naked TV, recorded today, May 24th, 2016. I'm your host, Aaron Lyons, and today I'm going to be covering some of the latest ransomware news, a follow-up on the Bangladesh heist, and some news about the U.S. Cyber Command. So, just recently, the group behind TeslaCrypt has suddenly and unexpectedly ceased operations. That's right, they're closing doors, they're going away, no more TeslaCrypt. Well, that might be a problem for any of us that have just been recently hit by TeslaCrypt, but in a surprisingly gracious move, when a security researcher at ESET reached out to the group via their support channel for their victims, that's right, even our cyber criminals have support, customer support, uh, they made the master decryption key public when asked. So that's right. Go out to ESET. They have a decryption tool for TeslaCrypt, and you can get your files back. In other ransomware news, we may recall back in January the DMA locker ransomware, which was pretty bad. Its decryption, its encryption was horribly flawed, and in the first two versions, a decryption tool, a recovery tool, was quickly released. Well, the group behind that ransomware has just released a new version, version 4, and they've fixed all of these flaws. And researchers are expecting this new version of uh, DMA to be widely distributed on a massive scale very, very soon, so be on the lookout. So, there's yet another new variant of ransomware out there, and this is Cerber. What is really interesting about Cerber is that it's using Windows script files to uh, download itself. So these script files are being uh, distributed via a double zipped file, which may bypass some security solutions. And when executed, it downloads server to the victim system and then carries out its uh, encryption. Like I always say, the only protection for ransomware is good, frequent backups, off-site, not local, and use something with versioning. It's not going to do you any good if you back up a whole bunch of encrypted files to your backups. So, a couple of weeks ago, in the Bangladesh heist, we reported that the FBI had stated that they had found evidence pointing to at least one employee acting as an accomplice in that heist. Well, in a crazy turnabout, the Bangladesh ambassador, John Gomes, recently told a panel at the Philippine Senate inquiry that there's no evidence at all linking anyone in Bangladesh to the February cyber heist completely contradicting what the FBI just said a couple of weeks ago. So the Philippine inquiry has helped recover $15 million of the stolen funds. You remember the total funds were $81 million. So a little bit, 
I guess every little bit helps. But, you know, I'm thinking that we're never actually going to know what happened in this hack. Just recently on the U.S. political front, the National Defense Authorization Act just cleared the U.S. House of Representatives this, this past week, and it's headed to the Senate. What's interesting about this bill from an information security standpoint is that it would make the U.S. Cyber Command its own unified command unit. Currently, it falls under the Strategic Command, which means it must seek permission prior to undertaking any operations. If it becomes its own unified command, it doesn't have to seek permission. It can undertake its own operations at its own determination. So the U.S. Cyber Command is currently under the same roof as the NSA and shares a commander with the current agency. Uh, so that means the commander for the Cyber Command and the commander for the NSA, same person. Well, this is part of why this bill is going through because there's a lot of politicians out there and probably people in the public that think maybe the Cyber Command shouldn't be under the NSA. Currently, the command takes heavy advantage of the NSA's resources, becomes its own unified command. It won't have quite as much access to those resources. That's it for this episode of Hack Naked TV. We thank you for listening. Email us at the show at hacknaked.tv. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, hack naked. <laughs>